Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd, kicking it like Tybo here in Junction City, Oregon once again, um, with a model that once again you folks directed me to, the 2600 KRB East to West Alta. Now, I've only had a chance to go through a couple Altas, but this is very quickly becoming a, uh, a real sweet spot, kind of personal favorite, guilty pleasure brand. Um, as I go through more and more of them, like, I really like what they do. Uh, so, like, they're, you know, they're sticking tin cousin, the Delaterra. It's a really smart class camper that it really knows where to punch and it knows where to hold back. Alta goes, what if we just kind of <laughs> really had fun with this thing? And they go above and beyond where a lot of manufacturers just don't. And it's it's easy to overlook them. And and I'll fully admit, when I first saw these, I kind of scoffed at them. I'm like, that's just uh, someone's trying to knock off a, a Grand Design Imagine. And I'm, surely, there's a lot of inspiration here. But they didn't just try to copy someone else. They said, I like what you did, but I think I can do it better this way. And, uh, you know, this floor plan especially is a really good one to compare against all kinds of different brands. Because it's like, you know, Cougar, uh, Whitehawk, all kinds of brands make a model like this. Uh, you know, where it's a private front bedroom, a big rear bathroom that is just fantastic. But a living room super slide and some really surprisingly good storage. It's a fantastic model and it's a good one to compare against one another. And I want to show you where this one stands apart. But I also want to be fair. There's a couple things this one doesn't do fantastically. It doesn't do door side windows extremely well. Um, there's also uh, a limitation, on a, well not a limitation, you flat out cannot access the bedroom in transit on this one. But Every RV has a give and a get. I want to show you the other things that you get with this one. And if you appreciate the fair look and stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. All right, so if everybody and their brother makes this floor plan, what makes this one special? That's what I want to focus on here today, where it stands apart. And, and certainly some of the things that I talk about, there will be other RVs that do some of these things. But every RV has its own kind of unique combination of factors. And that's, that's kind of the fun thing, you know, I get to see where they're different and, and, and where they're not. Like, we have a taller ceiling in here. That's an immediate big factor for me. Uh, uh, your industry standard uh, lightweight or laminated trailer ceiling height's about six and a half feet. Some of them have a vault. This is six foot nine tall all the way across. Freedom Express is kind of like that. This is also completely carpetless and ventless flooring. So those are a couple cool one-two whammy features. You may notice over here, too. Uh, instead of a U-dinette, they opted to go for an extra large, big old plush theater seat right here on Boardwalk and Park Place, straight across from the Entertainment Center. And they frame that up with maximized window coverage. But like everybody, they have a ton of windows on the driver's side so that you're looking at the camper next to you, kind of like we're doing right now. Um, this is one of the things, though, they do a little bit different. And I am a huge fan of this. Admittedly, it's simple, it's inexpensive, and visually, it looks kind of cheap. Like, I get that. But take that out of the, like, like I understand it. Let's acknowledge that. But at the same time, you have a single lightweight folding leg table. The other side brackets against the wall. So if you need to push down on this to pick yourself up, it's sturdy, it's stable. If you bump it, it's not going to go flying. You know, you have to really smack that thing to end the game of Monopoly all over the floor. There's also household and USB outlets out on there. And I intentionally left the straps in place. So you see, you don't necessarily have to fold that down into sleeper mode. And with only the one leg dropping down, it is far less of a knee knocker dinette. I really like that. The only way that could be better to me is if there was a second folding leg that was folded up when you weren't using it. So if you wanted to unbracket the table to take it outside, that would be truly next level. Um, all the windows are, uh, you know, they all open for airflow, including the slide sides. That's an immediate differentiating factor for a lot of people to build this. Um, what is your take on this though? They box those in pretty heavily, both valances and Lamberkins, so that if you do uh, roll down the blackout nightshades over here, there's really no light that can bleed through as a result. I kind of like that. Personally, I kind of like that. But I know some people generally dislike them. Uh, admittedly, especially around the dinette, you will tend to bump into them a little bit. They do stick out. You could always remove them if you didn't want them there. That is always an option that you have available to you. Um, they go with a lighter color uh, decor. Some people do. Some people don't. 
Over here, we're looking at a 12-volt uh, uh, DC compressor fridge, which is almost a rare find uh, in the Pacific Northwest where I find myself uh, currently. Um, not that there's anything you know wrong with that. It's just around here, you find a lot of gas electric two-ways. Um, now, I'm sitting in the right-hand theater seat, and if I look straight, you see the TV's offset a little bit. That's pretty normal. I mean, it's I don't know that it's literally possible to have two seats in a big chair like this directly face the TV, but I think this definitely counts. So that's what it would look like over from the uh, the left-hand seat, as it were. And this is a wall-hugging theater recliner. Um, behind that TV, though, it, and trying to be fair, admittedly, that's a it's a 32-inch TV. It's it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It it almost this is such a first world. Like I almost feel ashamed to say this, but compared to other people at at this price point who are doing this floor plan, it does feel a little bit small. Um, what would you think about this idea? What if those little um, the, the, you see the way this TV is all framed out? What if those wood chunks weren't on each side of the TV? So you could put something bigger in there. Like, I don't know, like a 36 or something. To me, I, it just feels a little more appropriate, like it would fill the space up. Now, speaking of space, you have a lot of space to fill because you have yourself a straight-up uh, clantry-tainment center. Closet, pantry, behind the entertainment area right there. Um, and I, I, I actually took one of the emergency escape window screens out of the bedroom and put it down in there to give you an idea of how much space is. Now you may have noticed it was like just laying on a box that that Clancy Retainment Center didn't go all the way open down to the floor. That's because um, that box construction is where there's an outside mini fridge on the, well, <laughs> outside exterior of the RV. So that's kind of what's in that little space. I suppose theoretically you could remove the fridge in the boxing and you'd be good to go. Um, I'm not much of a boxer myself. Hey. Anyway, um, <laughs> we are looking at a uh, the, the standard AC arrangement on this, which is a Furion 14,500 BTU. You can build this with 50 amp instead of the standard 30 like we're looking at today. Um, you can also, uh, you know, add a second one of those air conditioners up here in the bedroom. Today, we're not seeing that. Now, you may have noticed uh, there's another one of those kind of like skylight ceiling vent things in the uh, the living room kitchen area. It actually has one of those small kind of like bathroom style four inch blade fans in it. Now that's not going to push a ton of air, but the fact is it's easy to upgrade, especially since the wiring's already run to it. Now we're looking at the standard bed arrangement in here as well. This is a, uh, a 70 by 80 King. And when you do that by default, you're going to end up with a little bit smaller side stands. They do maintain full uh, height hanging or full width rather hanging closets, although I would find, and I would get like some double-sided sticky tape, get a little foam, don't jab me in the shoulder when I roll over, uh, kind of guard on that. You'll, you'll thank me. You'll thank me for that later. Um, there is a 60 by 80 queen swap shin, though. Uh, also, down below here, they've got a very cool storage situation. It is very similar to what Coachman is doing with their vaulted bed systems in a lot of their RVs, admittedly. But what I also like is the way they did those little side drawers right there, you may, you have household and USB outlets right where you want them, but there's also that little hidden headboard pocket storage, which I really like. Another little key detail here in their bedroom, just, uh, you know, with the taller ceiling, a little light switch to shut off the bedroom lights is nice. Although the the the, the lights under the uh, the headboard, those you have to reach up to uh, to, to click off. Uh, as opposed to my wife, who you know, I just reach over and I, I I she's trying to sleep and I just I just poke her. I just like poke her in the shoulder and her I tick off, not click off. <laughs> anyway, she doesn't think it's as funny as I do. Um, I think it's hilarious. I don't know. I love those tall slide side windows. Sorry, squirrel. Moving on. Um, I think you get the idea. You know, we kind of sat at the theater seat. You got the look, no neck wrecker, entertainment center kind of action, easy cleaning floors. I think we pretty much, like, we, we got this. We understand this, right? One quick thing I do want to show you here. Let the camera adjust to the light a little bit so you can see that vent fan up there. Um, and then you might be wondering, okay, so what are they doing in the bathroom? And the answer to that is the exact same thing. Once again... Not my favorite. For a smaller room like this, it's sufficient, certainly. I wouldn't be offended by a bigger fan. And I like this. Instead of, they had a ton of counter space. 
And it probably would have been very tempting to try to do something cute. Like, let's go with two sinks and look all fancy and blah, blah, blah. And said, no, they didn't. They went smart. This would give me one big functional sink and then a crap load of counter space, which is a scientifical measurement, mind you. Um, porcelain foot flush stool. And look at this. Well, there's, there's no question about it. Whether it's leg room, whether it's elbow room, whether it's head room, there's plenty of room around this toilet. The only thing that's kind of weird about it, you might have noticed, if the bathroom door is open, you can stare at the people who are laying in bed. Obviously not too bad. Swing our way around here. Pardon my footprints. That's what I was, uh, I, I, 30 by 36 shower, and I obviously had to stand in it. So that you could see how much ceiling height I have in here. And, and hey, speaking of that, special guest, Josh Yarby Nerd. Take it away, Josh. Now, I'm a little over six foot, six, two or three, depending on what I wear it or whatever. Um, and you look at this and you say, oh, nice. He doesn't have to put his head in the skylight. But the thing is, I'm standing on my toes right now. Check this out. This is awesome headroom with that taller ceiling. Oh, thank you very much. That guy's a nerd. Can't stand him. I also can't stand open storage in bathrooms, but... I've been told by many people, dude, it's not that big a deal. You roll your towels up, even all this, even all the way back here in the RV, they don't tend to bounce out. They don't tend to, you know, flop all over the place. It's not a big deal. It's just, it's just a personal thing. If I felt that weird about it, I'd just, I don't know, I'd throw some cargo netting or something over it. And then for road mode. Now, I mean, I, I'm I'm literally standing in the bathroom, so I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think you need me to turn the camera back around. Um, you can get, it's, it's a little tight. You can do the sideways travel tray with two step to slip through there. You can get into your kitchen, you can get to the drawers and the fridge, so it's got snack-tastic access. But you're gonna lose the bedroom. So if that's a really big important deal to you, you might want to look at something else that has a second door straight into the bedroom, but I know some people dislike that. They feel they lose some privacy. I don't care either way. I just want you to get the one that fits you best. That's why I take the time to close all this stuff up for you. So kind of fitting, we have a Della Terra there. At the time that this is publishing, I just published a video of the 261 RB East to West Della Terra stick and tin. Basically, the stick and tin version of this floor plan. So, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy pants laminated. If you want to compare it against something like, oh, I like this, but, you know, I still work for a living, pal. I, you know, my name's Larry Lunchbucket, my wife is Jane Sixpack, and you know, we, we ain't quite up to that stage. Well, you know, that's where this one can come in, uh, that one can come in for you. But, thing with Alta, and this is a technical term, mind you, is they do it differentationally and there's some folks walking next to me right now going what did he say now i like getting down in the storage compartment of these uh i'm not very good at just getting down though i i never my i don't know i i i i, I can't dance anyway you get the idea it's a big baggage compartment you see that you've got that enclosed docking center or solar controller battery disconnect a little outside shower is all down there but they do have a big baggage door but they mount it vertically it's a little different one of the things that I like about it is they still uh, give you that magnet hold back. But what's nice is it's not going to like fall down and clunk and thunk you on the head. That's one word, by the way, clunk and thunk you. Um, <laughs> kind of like the murder hobos, what come a get you from the gas station. That's all one word. Anyway, um, they also managed to pull something off here that very few brands like Imagine, Rockwood, Flagstaff have, have been able to do. They gave this thing a little more of a blunt nose front end but it doesn't really like look and feel kind of flat on the front and that is really one of the secrets in the sauce to their bedroom i think the the real trick is what they did with the nose cap to kind of draw your eyes and it still has that back angle it has a little bit of a little wind cut sweep and, and to me it just looks good the color palette's extremely neutral don't really care what color truck you have it's going to look pretty good in front of this thing i know some folks really like to uh, marry things up. This is part of a option we're going to talk about on the roof, by the way, called the West Coast Power Package. You're getting double batteries from the factory on this, which is actually kind of cool. So you don't have to, you know, you're, you're just you're just good. You're all set when it comes to that sort of thing. Now you don't have a bedroom entry door, as we saw inside. That did mean. 
They were able to kind of extend that awning arm a little bit though, so you're gaining extra awning space as a result. That's kind of that knee bone to leg bone sort of thing that sometimes it's a bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but that's why there's so many versions sometimes of the same floor plate. This is such a popular model that, you know, they got to do little things like that. Now, I wanted to get you down here to show you a couple things. You might be wondering, how did they give me that big front compartment with that vertical door? Well, it's because the front of this is actually a drop frame. It's, it's, it's a fifth wheel style chassis. It just doesn't gooseneck up at the hitch point. You see the power jacks. Uh, so we've got, you know, power stabilizers, power tongue jack, power awning. Uh, just about power everything heated and closed belly down here. Uh, you know very solid extended season package now one thing I am noticing while I'm down here We have a kitchen gray outlet up front Which I expect and I'm looking over in the distance and I see a bathroom black and gray outlet in the back Which I kind of expected that is one of those sort of just hiccups on a floor plan like this that um, is very rarely avoided by a manufacturer. They have to do some very specific engineering for it. Um, East West has this year adopted uh, and standardized Goodyear uh, endurance radials, which I think is cool. And they don't have a full on camp kitchen. But what I do like is you do have dad's medicine cabinet right outside here. Although if you didn't want the mini fridge, even though it's standard, you could always just remove it. But I, I like it there. I like having drinks outside. It just spares you from, you know, going through the entire RV uh, to, just to grab a drink. Especially nice considering the fact that you'd have to walk past the TV entertainment to just go get a drink in this one. And I want to give them some serious credit because there is this just, just rampant trend of manufacturers putting absolutely no window of any variety in the entry door. So for that... East to West, I salute you. Thank you. Job well done. Um, now, uh, one of the things that you can't see on this, but you'll feel the difference in it when you are camping or towing, actually, is Asdell. So if you're not familiar with Asdell, it's a composite resin material, and it's taking place of the wood paneling that would normally be right under the fiberglass skin. Asdell itself is lighter weight, and it's also a little bit better at reflecting that sun that's beating on the side of this trailer right now. So it's gonna help, uh, you know, give you a, a lighter weight towing experience. And it's also going to help give you a cooler camping experience, which I think is pretty cool. Crap, on a spatula, I almost forgot. I was so busy gushing over a couple other details. I forgot the fact, it, like you saw they're giving us the stable steps. Neat. Well, not given. You're buying it. You get what I'm saying. Okay, anyway. But under that, they have something that like has been available as an aftermarket option for people who wanted to remove their traditional folding steps. They include a little uh, tool chest right there. Okay, neat, right? But here's the thing. Are you a person who really doesn't like those stable steps? The fact that they reserve the space for that tool chest means that if you wanted to upfit this with a, uh, a more traditional folding set of steps, you could do it. Now, as I mentioned, we're out here in Oregon today, so it's no surprise to me that this is outfitted with what's uh, one of the options that's called the West Coast uh, Power Package or something like that. But it bumps us up from just like a little 50 watt uh, battery maintainer to a 170 watt solar package, which admittedly, that's not like, the, the be all end all of solar, but it's respectable. It's not bad. It's enough that on a good sunny day, it should be able to offset something like a 12 volt compressor fridge, or if you go to uh, a, uh, a two way gas electric fridge, I think that, you know, with the, the lighter battery consumption that comes on the propane side of those fridges, this should be able to give you a pretty respectable off-grid dry camp time, although it's not going to do anything for something like that uh, 14,500 BTU Furion air conditioner we have here. The other thing I noticed on this, though, a lot of times when you see me get up on a roof, you just see, like, you can see the seams between the roof decking. This is, uh, it's not a laminated roof, but, like, visually, it looks like it. The fit and finish even on the roof level of this is pretty fantastic. And that is really, that's one of those areas that, you know, when we're, when we're shopping for any of these RVs at any place, very rarely does somebody take the time to like, just even glance at the roof. I really recommend you do it. Um, because I, I think you, 
you can kind of learn the DNA of the factory production level a little bit more. If something's a little sloppier, it tends to really kind of show itself up here on the roof, because I think, sadly, a lot of the logic is they don't expect you to look up here. What I see, I see a lot of pride. Uh, I, I don't see like where they, they, they put sealant around the fixtures then slopped it everywhere. I don't see those seams between every single ceiling panel. Like, this looks fantastic up here. And just so you know, I'm not trying to hide something because I swear, if I don't, if I don't go out of my way to show that there's nothing up my sleeve, someone says, yeah, why didn't you show us the backside? I bet it's garbage. Nope. Nope. This is excellent. So once again, thank you for your suggestion. You continue to drive and guide this channel. And as long as you're keep willing to watch, as long as you're keep willing to watch, whatever. I'm sticking with it. I'm not reshooting this. I don't care. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just another person like you. I get tired and I just don't care anymore. <laughs> now I got the tired giggles. <laughs> All right, whatever, I'm wrapping this up. Check the links in the video description. You can find pricing and availability, and I'm going to leave you just a slew of links to different companies who make a floor plan like this. And I would love it if on this video or any of those videos, you left me a note, which one is your favorite? I don't know that I personally have a favorite now. I do lean personally a lot toward the, the Cougar 26 RBS. It hits the notes for me, but which one hits the notes for you? Let me know. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.